but they handed the home team its worst loss in the 34-year history of Poly Pavilion. California is looking for more tonight. UCLA is trying to stem the flow of blood. Hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins once more with Dick Vitale. Dick, it's a given. The two Cal superstars, Kid and Murray, outstanding. But the supporting cast really has California playing like a big-time team right now. Barry, I really believe that when you talk about Jason Kidd and Lamar Murray, we talk about the best combination in all of basketball. But Monty Buckley has become outstanding. He's knocked down the trifecta. He has given them scoring, moving without the basketball. And then defensively, they're getting some positive play out of the guy inside by the name of Michael Stewart, the rejector. He's been a tremendous shot blocker and he's scoring around the inside as well. But it's their supporting cast that's really given him that winning edge to join Mr. Kidd and Mr. Murray. Well, certainly, yes, Coach, you've been through what UCLA is going through right now. Every team has an ebb and flow during the course of the season. Bruins have bottomed out. They need to change things right now. Well, UCLA was 14 and zip, and then they ran into that buzzsaw, that unbelievable performance by Jason Kidd when Jason Kidd stopped that winning streak along with California. Since then, they've been 4-3. and three. If there is a must game, this is a must game for UCLA not only for the Pac-10 championship, but for the fact, number one, to get back that win winning edge. They have lost it, and psychologically, they are struggling. There's a bottom line for California in this game, and that is stop the ball. If they can keep Ty Sedney from penetrating, the Bears have a chance to do this time what they did last time. There's no... Barry Tompkins with Vic, Vic Vitale. We are back at Pauley Pavilion here in Westwood. Just about get set to get started between UCLA and California. Let's take a look at the lineups. Brought to you by Donna Redekar. Jason Kidd, of course, he is the key man for California. He will control the tempo on both ends of the floor with Buckley, Jamison, Murray, and Stuart Todd Bozeman, a guy who is starting to make believers out of all the skeptics. Second year at Cal and an enviable record, to be sure. 29 up and 7 down. For the UCLA Bruins, Ty Sedney, the key player for them. Point guard position, extremely important in this game. Tarver's been struggling lately, says he's whole tonight with Zedek O'Bannon and his brother, that is Charles and Ed O'Bannon Square. Jim Herrick, and you see his record at UCLA, a man under a microscope. Barry, one of the real key players, I think, on the floor is Sean Carver. Carver's got to give him some consistent play. He's really been inconsistent. He can shoot, and he's also an outstanding defensive player when he's playing well. Arizona at 18 points and 10 rebounds, and they think they've really found a true legitimate major college center. Jason Kidd, I, I swear I could pay it to watch him play. He's the one guy I'd give up the cash to watch number five. This time he gave up the ball, however, I know. to Sean Tarver. Edney with the penetration. That is what was missing from UCLA's arsenal the last time, and they couldn't finish. His cousin's here, Tracy Murray, playing with Portland. Came out to see him play. Travel on O'Bannon. Murray, the definitive streak shooter, too. Makes that first shot. He can give you big problems. I'll tell you, he was scintillating against Arizona when they beat Arizona in an overtime game. He put on an unbelievable performance, and not too many people go into McHale Center and win. They're 105 and 3 in their last 108 games. Arizona. Murray again. As I said, he's got that rainbow three. You've done your scouting report, Barry. Against Oregon, Murray had 18 points in the first seven minutes of the ball game. What happens immediately with him getting on fire early, it quiets the crowd down right out of the gate. UCLA trying to establish Zedek on the interior early. Arizona had good success going down low against California. UCLA not so, so far. Another turnover. Careless pass by Buckley. And Kidd steals it the other way. Here come the Bears. Three on two. Kidd in the middle. Give it up to Murray. What a great pass. That's why they're the best combination in basketball. No one does it better than Jason Kidd and Lamont Murray as a combo. Edney with the penetration again. Kidd the reach in. Jason Kidd is scintillating in the open court. He really excels in transition. 
Watch number five. Head off, has great vision, and he's looking for the guy that can complete the play. And he finds him in Lamont Murray. Bears went zone a great deal the first time these two teams faced each other. Right now, man to man. They're out of the man to man. They're now zoning. They're going to a 1 3 1 zone. That's exactly the zone that was successful the last time. Here's Jason Kidd again, one on one with Edney. We'll wait for help, pulls up for three. One of the wraps on Jason's been his long range shooting, but this year he's shooting about 40% from three point range. Really has improved as a shooter. You see they standing around offensively, not getting enough motion. You look at Carver, look at Abandon, just standing. Tarver. That's the guy they got to find. They got to find his jump shot, and he's also got to give him consistent play defensively. He's going to match up right now playing Jason Kidd. That means Buckley is playing Edney. Big size differential, Barry. And they go right to Buckley down low. Edney had no chance. Obviously, the m and the mismatch. They post him inside at 6-7 against Tyus Edney. One of the keys for UCLA tonight is to be effective offensively. If they're effective offensively, it takes away Todd Bozeman's plan in terms of getting the ball into Jason Kidd's hand in transition. Todd has done some job 29 and 7 since taking over for Lou Campanelli, who, by the way, I really firmly believe with all the jobs opening up, Lou Campanelli can build a program. And people forget what he did at James Madison and what he did here at Cal to get this program started. But you can't deny the job this guy has No, done. cannot. And starting to earn the respect. Well, he's giving hands for fives already. Look at the smile on his face. <laughs> he smells the W already early. Right. A little early, isn't it? A little early. And an air of confidence on that side. Jameson really played well against Cincinnati in their last game. They got him involved offensively on the interior. Once again, Buckley trying to post up Edmund. Buckley can also shoot that three-point shot as well. Look at that dribble penetration. Good hands by Tarver, second steal. Got to convert in transition. Three on two. O'Bannon can't convert. That was Charles O'Bannon with the miss. They have to make those. Charles really struggling a little bit offensively lately. How about that pass from Kidd to Murray to the basket, due to the foul? I have not seen a better passer in transition than Jason Kidd. In all the years that I've been following the game, maybe, well, I came in, Magic was not playing collegiate basketball when I started in television. But he has that Magic Johnson vision. Now, here he is in transition. Look at that drop bounce pass. And he always knows I'm going to go to a guy that can score. He's such a delight to watch. Last time against UCLA, 18 points, 14 assists, 12 boards. Not bad then. No. Did he suddenly popcorn and tickets? <laughs> See, I think depth could be a factor. I think when you look at this basketball team in California, I see Sweet 16 maybe as far as they can go. They have only seven scholarship players and a total of nine players that dress. They would have been top ten and maybe top five if they had K.J. Roberts and Grigsby. Yeah, two starters. And then they lost a very promising freshman. Randy Duck. Yep. Broke his arm. Murray on her blocks quickly. He's got nine points, nine of the Bears' 11. That's quite a start. Not bad. He's still a recruiting game. Nobody really thought I could play. He said they weren't really all recruiting me. They said I played a competition that was really light. I asked Jimmy Eric. He said, not true. We wanted him. <laughs> Ed O'Bannon gets it. Ed O'Bannon had a big game against California in the first meeting. 19 rebounds. Let's go, get set, let's go. Let's go they really got closed out there by Arizona in that blowout. Arizona put a show on, but people forget that Arizona also blew out Michigan. Well, we were talking at the beginning of the program about an ebb and flow of a season, and right now Arizona's on top of it. Hey, I'll tell you right now, forget about Arizona losing in the first round. I know they're going to be nervous. You imagine Lou Olsen that day. He will be so tight and so nervous, but you know what? Count it. They're going to get that the W. Floor. There's no way they're going to lose this year with Stoudemire and Reeves in the round one. Yeah, to this day, they think the Santa Clara game last year was the first game of the 1994 season. Fifteen fifty-five remaining first half. Bears lead it by three. Anwar McQueen in the ball game for California. He's given him some solid minutes out of Washington, D.C. 
UFC. Little ball handler. As Jason can, I love the way he keeps his head up at all times. Has a tremendous feel as to where people are on the floor. Murray posting up. Nice give to Buckley. Did you see that pass? Murray looked at Kidd and said, Jason, you're not the only magician. I could pass the rock as well. What a great look by Lamont Murray on the baseline. The Queen really trying to lock up on Edmund. Interesting matchup between them. And he's got to do exactly what you said earlier. He's got to start breaking the defenses down with dribble penetration. Not a good shot. Bad shot. Kid fights for the rebound, saves it for Buckley. UCLA slow to the basketball. Murray to come back. Beat everybody. Damn city. And again, you talked about the, the vision of Jason Kidd just to see Murray make that break. I'm Jimmy Herrick. I am really a little concerned right now. They seem to be a step behind the action. tonight's games. Well, you see Washington State at 6-7, 16 and 9. What's impressive for the Pac-10, they're a sixth place team and they got wins over Alabama, wins over, as I said earlier, Michigan State, win over Marquette. I mean, that's impressive when you look at that. A little ball reversal. Trying to open up the middle of the floor. And they open. Queen the rebound. Here's Kidd, two on one once again. Kidd lost the handle, took it to the basket, double clutched it, counted. What a great play in the open court. He switched it to his left hand. He knew that the defensive player was all over his right hand. What an unbelievable play. He's awesome, baby. Jason Kidd, an all rose racer. Take a look, America. Here comes the best point guard in the land. He's going coast to coast. He says it's showtime, it's Tinseltown. Lay it on the glass, baby. Jason Kidd. Can you flat out play? He can play. Hey, I'll tell you, I want to turn back my check tonight. Are you kidding me? We should not get paid to see him play. Can I agree. give yours up? I agree. We'll both give it up? That, sure. I'm not giving mine up. Yours is bigger. <laughs> I'm not giving mine up. <laughs> oh, nice look inside. But see, he made one mistake right there, Zeta. Instead of stepping to the ball aggressively, he waited for the ball to come to him. You gotta go meet the basketball, and you gotta step to it with authority, or he would have a layup. Michael Stewart back into the ball game. Jamison leaves for California. Cameron Dollar is the ball game for UCLA. They're high on. They're really high on Cameron Dollar. Edney sits. Bears have managed to take Tyus Edney pretty much out of the ball game so far. They're taking away his dribble penetration by playing soft on him and closing off the driving lane. Okay, there's that zone right now. They're going to zone, and of course, they go to the perimeter. Charlie O'Banion's got to get involved. Harvey, the short. Stewart saves it for McQueen. Here's Kidd ahead of everybody again. Race to the basket. Give it to Murray. The oh! Lamont Murray, is he quick to the goal? Jam City. Can you imagine? I, I sit here in amazement. I said it Sunday as well as we look at Jimmy Herrick. What they would be like if 
Bigsby and K.J. Roberts. Now look at, does he love to give the Rock up? What a quarterback he is, Jason Kidd. And then Murray knows how to finalize. There's the emotion of Jason. Jason is the real deal, I tell you that. Kid four assists in the ball game so far. Murray, 13 points. Jason Kidd could come in the NBA and star immediately. In the open court, a 24-second clock in transition, he will be dynamite. And I think he's done. I really believe that he and Lamar Murray will definitely be part of the NBA draft. Court vision, what everybody talks oh, about. Oh, amazing. Understands the passing lanes. So unselfish and a great attitude. He brings the whole package to the table. Bannon in traffic. Tough shot. Zidic will give him a second chance. Stewart fouled him. UCLA really having a tough time getting good shots, Barry. Because they're not getting enough ball movement and player movement. Look at this here. The last seven games, check the numbers. All the numbers have come down. 52% field goal down to 45. Three point goal, 36 25. And this one is really big. The opponents were only shooting 39%. Now it's up to 44. A search for a contact lens on the floor as Michael Stewart lost the lens. You might want to look on Zedek's thumb. I wear those contacts, I'll tell you this. I was on my hands and knees yesterday. I couldn't find one in my room. I was going crazy about it. I couldn't find that little thing. I'm blind without my contact on, totally. Oh, there he is, gets hit right in the face. He wants to be a broadcaster, Jelani Gardner, a tremendous prospect from out of California. He told me, he said, my four schools are Syracuse, UCLA, California, and Nolan Richardson at the Razorbacks of Arkansas. Not going to go wrong wherever he goes. Oh, that's a pretty good score. Zedek is really a product of that same work ethic. He's the last guy to leave practice, the first guy he is, constantly looking to improve himself. He's got that European work ethic. Also coaches some. Yeah, that's right, his dad coaches. In fact, well, his dad's coaching now in Sweden. The one positive for UCLA, they're hanging around and only down six, and they have not played well. Jamison took it to the basket, picked clean. It's going to be UCLA's ball. UCLA's got to get a little momentum here. They've got to be able to start to put some points on the board, attacking the defense. They're playing too much on the perimeter. See, there's that zone. That zone is bothering It really is. See how they're playing everything on the perimeter? Everything is on the perimeter, and you face the defense. They're doing nothing in attacking the seam of the zone. With dribble penetration, or stepping people into the wide area. The three-second area is wide open. And nobody's sliding to the open area in the lane. And O'Bannon. Well, he shoots it right over the top of the zone. That's this smart piece for I believe in attacking the zone in the gut of the zone. Oh, look at that little pass. And hey, we can repeat this all night. Well, you, we can repeat this story all night. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's just, I have never seen a guy with that kind of touch and that kind of feel as Jason did. And he's also a kid. He expects every pass to be perfect. How about those hands? Oh, look, at that, look at that lead pass. He just laid on. McQueen finishes and one. Good call. I'd get a T.O., baby, if I'm Jimmy Herrick. He's got to get this club fired up. They're really not playing with any intensity and emotion at all. Now watch Jason. He makes the steal. He's already anticipating the man cutting. Lays it out in front. This is not a good foul right here. Not a good foul. There's McQueen taking it for the goal. There's the contact. Good call by the official. Can't convert. Eight point lead 
California, their biggest. O'Bannon. Short from three point range. Oh, he's a quick rebounder as well. Evans can work fairly well for a wing forward as well. Oh, look at that pass. Ladies and gentlemen, we are seeing a clinic on the art of passing the basketball. I mean, when you went to the NBA, it was Magic and Larry Bird. They had that sixth sense in understanding how to find the open man. In fact, it was amazing. Larry Bird was in the crowd Sunday watching Jason Kidd play. He was evaluating for the Celtics who need a little help. There's the pass to Mr. Stewart. Yeah, I've been watching Jason Kidd since he was a sophomore in high school. Well, I know you're from and, the San Francisco area. And he's just something special. Right from the beginning, he's something special. Doesn't have to score any points. He's a guy that could score four points and be the star of the game. He's a, he's a Connell, con Connell already for I don't know how many points he's passing. Buckley and replacing Murray. Murray will sit. Buckley on the floor. Murray deserves a little rest. I'd give him a hug. I'd say, wow, Lamar, you came to play. He's got 15. It's not a bad. No, it's not. We've got a timeout. 10.44 remaining. First half. California 26. UCLA 16. Bears by 10. versus 77%, and that's because of the great play of Jason Kidd. Look at the fast break points. I mean, that's incredible. 14 to zip. UCLA being denied anything in transition. Sean Tarver brings the ball across the timeline for UCLA. They bring Eddie, Eddie back on the floor, playing three guards now with Dollar on the floor as well. Zidic. I don't see him take that shot a lot. Big oh. time follow by, by Tarver. A little bit of luck on that, baby. Kid spots up the three. They say he can't shoot the basketball. Let me tell you something. I watched him today in practice. He's got excellent technique, and the best thing is he's working and working on it. He's getting better and better. Shooting 40% from three-point range. Is that zone? They're really bothering UCLA. And the Bears basically nice finish that time by O'Bannon. Well, Put the ball inside. That's smart right there, Barry. Getting the ball inside against the zone. Foul is on Ryan Jameson. His second personal. Seven. Here's another look at it. Down low, O'Bannon with a good position. Buckley trying to help. That was a super catch by Ed O'Bannon. He really went to meet the basketball and tapped it. They're going to start to get some things in transition. The problem is defensively, UCLA and many clubs that play California, you can't force the turnover against Jason Kidd. Well, Kidd will sit now, and I'm sure it'll be a very short ball. Murray into the game for Jason Kidd. Murray comes back into the ball. He pulls up. Score. I mean, that's incredible. He is on fire. He is on fire for that win. Another turnover. Well, the first time that these two teams teed it up, California won by 15. One for 19 from three point range. The zone really bothered them. Perimeter shooting was atrocious for UCLA. Jason Kidd, what a night. 18 points, 14 rebounds, 12 assists, 17 popcorn. He sold popcorn, he sold tickets. Well, and you saw that one for 19 figure. And California in that game went to the 1 3 1 very extensively, also. And basically, that's what they're doing here. They're just saying, go ahead and beat it. You see, they now come out of the man to man. They've gone to the zone. So, Buckley from outside. And O'Bannon with the rebound. Charles O'Bannon. Man. Buckley's really become an improved player. He's gotten better and better as the season's progressed. Nice pass. Great look. Tarver couldn't finish, however. Got to lay that on the glass. That was caught here by John Wooden. You got to put that up on the glass. Buckley double clutched it. Nice job of defense by UCLA that time to force the double clutch. Here's what they got to do. Push the ball up the floor. I think he's got to start to make things happen with a little penetration. And a pull up in the basket. Big penetration. Got into the three second area. Took the little jump shot. Jason's getting ready to come in. They're not going to keep him out too long. I think the zone is a good decision right now. Until they can prove they can knock down that shot consistently from the perimeter. They can't handle a man-to-man. -man. Murray, a little hard that time. Charles O'Bannon to the rebound. You gotta shade him on a wing. You gotta make sure you're aware. 
up here. He puts a little penetration. And he started making it happen. Tyus said he started to create his own shot. And a timeout called by California with 8 minutes 14 seconds remaining in the first half. UCLA chipping away at him a little bit. It's 31 24, California. Well, Jason Kidd against UCLA last time, as we said, a clinic. 18 points, 14 assists, 12 boards, 4 steals. Watch this dish right here. Look at him drop it off. The great look. And now we're going to watch him defensively. Good anticipation, and then he converts. Look at his head up all the time, and there's the little jam. He scored 2,661 points in high school. He had 1,155 assists. St. Joseph's of Notre Dame in Alameda, California. There's that zone right now by UCLA, a 2-3 zone. I'm surprised that more teams don't play a combination and play a little triangle and two. Play man-to-man -man on Kidd and man-to-man -man on Murray. Zone with three of them. And haven't seen it too much against California. Another turnover. Bruins with a chance to cut the lead. Blocked by Buckley. Good effort by Buckley. Murray fast hands it. Kidd ahead of everybody. Four-point turnaround. Not a good play by Cameron Dollar trying to make this an attack on the pass. And he's starting to try to put a little more pressure on the defense, running the ball up the court. Tarver got near, missed the shot again. Cameron Donner with a tough rebound down low. Stewart got a hand on it, and a foul by Stewart on Zinni. Mark Blauschen in the Boston Globe just wrote a little note I saw. He said, you know what? Kid would look great in a Boston Celtic uniform. I know it looked great, great in a lot of uniforms. So George Cena goes over the line. That's going to be a tough decision. This year, as opposed to when Shaquille O'Neal came out, he knew automatically the number one. Think about it. It's not as automatic as people think of Glenn Robinson comes out that he's number one. I love Glenn. But some people are going to think about Jason Kidd. They're going to think about Grant Hill. And they're going to think about Danielle Bush. Well, there's a guy whose stock has risen dramatically this year. And he deservedly so. Yes. Playing brilliantly. Yes. Yes. And Jason Kidd. Watch the left hand. Are you serious? Are you serious? Is that vision? Oh, Jason wow. Kidd. Bears by 13. Oh. Now the Bruins don't have to look too far behind them to see what the Bears did to them last year here at Paul. The humiliated him here. Muhammad Ali, one of my favorite people of all time. What a beautiful guy. Still bigger than life. Oh, he's a Try to keep this club in the game. Murray won't go. Murray was seven out of nine. Kid kept it alive again, gets it back to Murray. Now to Kid and the foul. Jason uses either hand really well. And because of his great passing ability, I have seen that. That's become contagious with everyone else. I mean, Lamar Murray's trying to make the great pass as well now. I watched that comeback against Arizona. I believe he did the game. Yes, I did. Yes. Uh, it was an incredible comeback they made against Arizona. It looked like they were in command. And then it was Kidd and Murray down the stretch. Murray with an impossible three-point shot to tie the game and send it to overtime. But Murray's one of those guys, and I'm sure there are a handful of them that you've had in your coaching career. There is no bad shot. Exactly, because he's the kind of guy that you want to give him the license to shoot it. 
You don't want to restrict him because then once you restrict him, you take away that individuality that he has and the ability to break the game open with a streak. Not a bad line for Jason Kidd so far in this ballgame. Remember, there's six minutes and 12 seconds left in the half. He's now got 11 points and eight assists. The eight assists have been just marvelous. I mean, really been marvelous plays. Tyus Edney fouled before he got to the basket by Kenny Jones. I'm teasing my wife. She doesn't know much about the game of basketball. I'm only teasing. When she walked over to the break here, she says to me, that number five is super. I said, yeah, he's a fair player. <laughs> my wife, amazing. She said, the number five is super. I think you understand it, though. Lorraine knows a little about yeah, basketball. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. Back 10 leaders right here on the free throw line. They've been from Arizona, 89%, Edney at 82 shooting the 80s, you're doing well, especially in today's day and age where the percentages are really dropped. Tyus Edney listed as 5'10", 145. I was talking, was talking today to Steve Lavin, one of the assistant coaches that usually asked him, how big is he really? He said, oh, about 5'8 and, and 135. Go, so you see, I can't make anything happen with the zone. The zone is a very passive defense that 2-3 they're playing. Force it, try it right now to force everything from the perimeter. Kid thought he was going to draw the foul that time. Yeah. That's why it was not a bad shot. There's Edney, got by Kid. That's what you need. Uh, Tyus Edney is really doing a solid job. He's trying to make it happen. But unfortunately, everybody else is standing around. He's got 10 points. They need to stop right here. UCLA's got to get a stop and try to get some momentum before this happens. Kelly Jones faces up, missed the three. Stewart with the offensive rebound and the putback. Now that's something that Michael Stewart was not doing early in the year. He played well against Cincinnati. He's getting better and better. Confidence is building, getting a lot more playing time. That was a big basket right there. Takes it up 11 when he could have got it to seven. Tarver drew the foul. Would have been a three-point effort. Had the shot have gone, he'll go to the line for two. Harper was such a solid player last year. This year has been up and down. He's had some ankle injuries. UNLV gets a win by one. Billy Massimino. That's a tough situation down at Vegas with he's faced with. Yeah, I do, do not envy his situation. Well, following Jerry Tarkanian, and Tarkanian's boosters are still down here. Really, to put so much pressure on a program. Oh, and a former coach has a talk show in town. It doesn't help you. <laughs> Barbara signed originally with you, with uh, UNLV. So did Ed O'Bannon. Barbara converts them both. He missed the first one. Sorry, he missed the first. I'm one. sorry. That's right. One for two. There's that two-three zone, and Buckley makes him pay with a three. Zone is very passive. It's not an aggressive 2-3. If you're going to play a zone, you got to match up. you got to find people. You have to know in your scouting report, but they can shoot that wing shot. That's dribble penetration. And the basket. There's a lot for Buckley. He puts that pass right on the ball. He's got O'Bannon. Too hard. He's not shooting the ball well at all. He's had a bad wrist problem. And another rejection by Stewart. That's his third. Very frustrating possession for UCLA and a foul just to compound it. That really adds a special dimension to your team when you have a shot blocker in the lane. It forces people to step out to the wings and to the perimeter. Watch Michael Stewart operating inside. We're going to see him right here with the rejection. Number 44, the diaper dandy. There's that excellent timing. Now we take another look at 44. See, he's got that perfect timing. Brad this team has really been hurt by injuries. We're not talking about just average players. Al Grigsby would have been one of the better power forwards in the league. KJ Roberts, how good is he? He had 24 against Wake Forest on the road. Both will redshirt, and with the incoming class that Todd Bozeman had, even with the loss, 
assumedly the loss of Jason Kidd and Lamont Murray. This is still going to be a very representative basketball team. That'll be a good basketball team next year. But you don't replace number five. That's, he comes along once every about 30, 40 years, if you're lucky. Last 13 points by UCLA, and he gets lonely. The little guy, here he is, trying to keep him in the game. See, but everybody else is standing around. Man to man, now they rotate multiple defenses, come out of the 1 3 1 zone, go to the man to man. Trying to win that motion game. Charles Event couldn't get the roll, followed his uh, shot by his brother, and it wouldn't go. Ball's going to be out of bounds to UCLA. The Abandon certainly aren't playing at the level that they were playing at earlier this year. Charles O'Bannon really has been a catalyst uh, emotionally on this UCLA team, but as you mentioned, has been struggling. Well, you know, he was getting some points earlier in the season with transition. Nice pass right there. O'Bannon brothers hook up for a deuce inside. Two great kids, great attitudes. You, a lot of freshmen go to that little wall during the course of the season, and they got to find themselves again. Says the 2 3, but it's a very passive 2 3. Murray, now McQueen, and Ziti the rebound. Got to run the ball up the court. Got to push it up the floor. Oh, nice, nice. wrap around. O'Bannon to O'Bannon. O'Bannon to O'Bannon, but they reverse it. Last time it was Charlie to Ed. This time says Ed, I'm going to lay one for you, Charlie. Got it under ten. Jason Kidd is a big shot maker. He's the kind of guy that when you need the big basket, he's clutch. Buckley. Wow, Buckley. He has stepped up in the last month of the season. He's got 10 already, Barry. Buckley's averaging 15 and a half points a game in the conference. Seedic big hook. That was Kareem. I thought Kareem. He looked like Kareem. Jason Kidd is whacked from three-point range. I think he's got an argument there. Yeah, I think it should three. be. I said he's going to find Ed O'Bannon. There's Ed O'Bannon in the lane around his back, Kuzi style. He dumps it to his brother Charlie, lays it on a glass. O'Bannon to O'Bannon. Jason Kidd to the line, shooting two. All I say is only two. Yeah, I thought he was behind me. I did too. Sixty-some percent free throw shoot, shooter, but down the stretch, if you watch him late in the game, that number goes up. Two out of four tonight. He's gonna have a double-double at halftime. That's right. He's got four triple doubles, and I believe they're only in, in four this season. There were only a total of four in the history of the Pac-10. That's right. Nobody had more than one. Murray with a rebound. Here's Jason Kidd again. Three on one. Kidd on the wing to McQueen. And it's hammered from behind by O'Bannon nicely. Nice look. Make the catch. You got a layup. Time. Oh, yes. That's Jam City. It was a four-point turnaround. What a great play by O'Bannon defensively because they had the deuce. the pass, play with some poise, maintain that lead. Jason's going to screen and step back and catch the ball. Doing exactly as you indicate, though. Use some clock up. Five seconds left up. Clear out. He's got a lot of poise. Couldn't get the three. Edney the rebound. Bruins again a chance to get it into single digits. Got to be UCLA's ball off Buckley. Bob Garibaldi with the call. Remember that name, people, if you like that little white baseball? The San Francisco Giants. Right. Former pitcher. A reminder that at halftime, John Saunders on the Delta Fawcett Report. NCAA scoring record falling tonight. Arizona played Oregon State. Wildcats on a big-time roll. And what a game between UMass and Temple. Michael Williams, what a clutch player for Massachusetts. Obama blocked by Murray. But Charles gets it back. Charles O'Bannon is starting to get involved a little bit offensively. He's an excellent transition player. He's got to get himself out of the break and get some layup. So the Bruins have cut it to nine once again. Every time they have, however, the Bears have made an answering basket. Harper trying to respond to the challenge of Gordon Kidd. Just pulled up, missed the three badly. That's a
his worst shot of the night. Boucher starting to run a little bit more, starting to get the ball out of transition. Oh, what a great block. Murray with the block. What a super block by Lamont Murray. Jason so smart, so heady. Catches the ball, brings it back out. A play for the last shot with 16 seconds. Looking for some dribble penetration into a lot of dish the rock. He wants a screen. He's getting me a nice screen. Gets it back for Murray. Murray pulls the trigger, draws oh, the foul. That's a silly foul. What a silly foul. Not a good play right there. Jimmy Hurt was kind of relaxed. Well, it puts Murray at the line for three shots with five seconds left. I'll tell you, this job is one tough job. Today they had that sound the line contest that they had a Mountain Dew in, and a bunch of kids are asking me questions. You would have thought that UCLA was 3-18. I know. They were asking questions I could not believe. What's happened to our UCLA program? Where are we going? I mean, are you serious? They're 18-3. and three. Yeah, those banners. He becomes a victim of all those banners that fly high here. Yeah, since the UCLA, uh, since the Notre Dame game, once again, there's been a bit of a groundswell. Oh, two years ago, Barry, the 28-4 in the regular season, they lose to Indiana in the final eight with Don McLean, Matt Vincent, Murray, and that gang. And the criticism was unbelievable, talking about we shouldn't renew his content on some of the talk shows. I, I just couldn't believe that. And the talk show is perpetuated, and Achille Jones steps in front, pulls up for three, and can't get it. The follow is no good at the half. That's the end of the first half with the score. And I'm sure even with that last little sequence. Some of the booze coming out of some of these UCLA fans. As Todd Bozeman's got to be happy. Ed O'Bannon certainly not happy. John Saunders in the studio. Boy, I'll tell you, Todd Bozeman, though, is going to say, I'll take it. Thank you very much, despite the miss at the buzzer. Bears by 12. Barry Tompkins with Dick Vitale. 53-41 ball game. The Bears lead the Bruins at halftime. Dick, the Bruins led the ball game 2 to nothing, and after that, it was, they did very much what we did, sat back and watched Jason Kidd and Murray. Well, it was a tremendous show in transition. John and Digger talked about it at halftime. They did a great job getting the ball up in transition. UCLA very slow with their defensive transition. Plus, UCLA not really attacking on the offensive end. I thought they were very lethargic. For a big game, a game that means so much, I thought they came out without a lot of emotion, and right now, they're in trouble against this Jason Kidd team. Jason Kidd, of course, did everything that could be asked of him and a little bit more in the first half. Well, watch this pass. This is a great little bounce pass. He makes the pass down to Mr. Murray with the jam. Magic Johnson was smiling when he saw that pass. And then we're going to watch right now Ty Sedney, the little guy, trying to keep him in the game. There he is with a little dribble penetration. Back it up. He's going to knock down the jump shot. He had a pretty big first half. He kept him in the game. Here are the numbers through the first 20 minutes of play. California, 55% from the field, making it off the fast break. Well, you're not going to win at home shooting 36%, getting blank from three-point range, 0 for 3. they got to pick it up offensively and defensively. they got to get back and really try to stop the progress of the basketball. A couple of other numbers jump off that page at me, too. 15 offensive rebounds to 4 for California for UCLA, and they couldn't convert. Exactly, couldn't convert. Hey, we're going to get a special guest. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to go get Magic Johnson to get down here and talk about Jason Kidd. We're going to get him down here to talk about it. Here's another turnover as Murray gets the ball. Murray has done a lot more than just shoot it today, too. Penetration and the pass to Buckley. Buckley can't hang on. UCLA comes away with it. Here come the Bruins. They got a four on three. O'Bannon in traffic. First four minutes right here is going to be big for UCLA. They got to put a little spurt together. They got to come out 9 1, 8 2, and get back in this basketball game. Jimmy Herrick's got to really be frustrated. You're at home. You expect a real positive performance. You're playing for the Pac 10 leadership. I don't think that's going to panic this guy. Now five seconds left. 
and he just pulls up for a long three. Got it off the front rim. I mean, that's like never, never land three. Edelman. And Jamison with a rebound. So both teams coming up empty through the first minute 30 seconds of the second half. Murray missed a shot. UCLA's got a converted transition. They got four on two. They're going to make something happen. Tarver off the glass. Oh, that's John Wooden style. Catch the ball on the wing, get the 45 degree angle so he can use the glass. Sean Tarver with 11 points. If you lay it on the glass and get that good angled cut, you'll be able to convert that a high percentage of times. Well, the other thing that hurt UCLA in the first half, no points off the bench as Jameson now right. lowered in good position. No defense at all right there by Zeta. Jameson gets that good post position. Scores inside. UCLA looks so flat. Out of earlier this year, they were so excited. Oh, they're going to get a T right here. Technical on Jimmy Eric. That hurts. Yeah, you've got possession in the basketball. So now you lose a potential two that you can have. They shoot two free throws, and they get the ball back. Not a good foul. Not a good technical right there by Jim Harrell. Frustration technical. Yeah, it really is. He's frustrated. I thought he was frustrated yesterday at practice. Talking about practice, he was really down about the fact that there has been some criticism, and the club is 18 and 3. But that's got to get at you. And they got a break right here that he misses both free throws. And if you're going to get technical, you might as well get it with some emotion and some absolute feeling to get the crowd stimulated, to give your team a big lift. Another turnover. Bruins with an opportunity here. Edney cross court to O'Bannon, and it's offensive. Oh, offensive. They wave it off. Call. He's a good official. He's been in the final four. That's three on him. Now here it comes. What a big turnaround. Ed O'Bannon catches the ball on the wing. And now he tacks the basket. He takes it right at the defense. is stationary. Good call. Jamison with a nice job to get position and keep it. Yeah, he squared his body really well. And it's a good defensive push position initially. Make anything can happen with their defense. McQueen retrieves the air on pass. Jason moves so well went off the basket they want to try to deny him the ball. A crossover and a kick out to McQueen. Now Kidd for three. And now a band of the rebound. That was a good shot. That was right on target. Charles O'Ban. Hey, Charlie O'Ban followed his left hand and jump shot. Bears are waiting for UCLA. They got to get emotional, UCLA. They need a player to give up a little emotion, a little bit of intensity. Maybe there it is. There's the emotion. There's the emotion I was talking about. You have to have emotion and feeling when you play this game. Well, Charles O'Bannon has been the emotional leader of this team. It was Ed that got him pumped up right there, though. Now let's see if they can capitalize. They got it to nine with the ball. The Bears going through a little bit of a cold spell. I've seen a lot of three-star players outplay five-star players because they play with feeling and passion and emotion. Ooh, they're going to get Buckley for that. He had a lot of ball there. I smell a spurt coming on by UCLA. I really smell a spurt coming on by the Bruins. Third foul on Buckley. That could be significant. Remember, it is not a deep bench for California. Buckley will sit, and Michael Stewart will come back. That's a good point, Barry. They have seven players on scholarship, and then two walk-ons who just give them some practice for And a foul underneath on Jamison. Well, they're going to get Stewart. And that's Stewart's third foul. So the Bears rapidly getting themselves in foul trouble. Deep trouble. That's going to really be a concern of Todd Bozeman. They score right here. This could be a big lift for UCLA. Ed O'Bannon wants the ball inside. Go to Ed O'Bannon down in the box. I'd go to O'Bannon inside. Big possession, trying to take some. Take the extra pass. And it's going to be the Bears' ball. 
Poor job of executing. Poor job of executing. Never got a shot up. 55 46. The Bears will have it when we come back. Well, the Bruins this half just two field goals and four turnovers. But California with just one field goal in the second half. Bears by nine with the ball. Sydney now playing Jason Kidd. Don't be surprised if Kidd slides inside against him. Gets the ball up, slides and post. He's an excellent post player, Kidd. This time they post Murray out. Murray with a turnaround. Not a bad Lamont ball. Get the ball into the hands of your number one option on the baseline, Lamont Murray. Got a grab foul. Murray now with 22. Such an explosive score, Barry. He has just tremendous explosiveness, whether it's going to the basket, moving without the ball, or stepping up and shooting that wing jump shot. Jump hook, tough shot by Obama. Follow Zedek won't go. Ball is loose. UCLA cannot put a spurt, it seems. They just can't get a spurt. Jason Kidd called a timeout there. 15.08 remaining. California takes a timeout. The Bears in front by... 11 it's the Bears 57 UCLA 46 back to Polly with more after this Bears lead at 57 46 Barry Tompkins with Dick Vitale we are watching an outstanding point guard we are joined by a guy who played a little bit of point guard Irvin Magic Johnson Magic let's get a quick review from you first of all on Jason Kidd well he's is he's smart and uh, he knows when to pass the ball and he sees the whole floor but he's unbelievable as a basketball player because he knows how to play the game I tell you, you talk about vision and seeing the open floor he reminds me so much of yourself when I watched as a young kid playing over the Lansing area in terms of finding the open man in the transition yeah you know it's almost funny because it's like Jason and uh, Murray work like myself and Greg Kelso used to work in college. It's not a bad time <laughs> <laughs> I think they're the best duo in America as a as a duo right now playing on the college scene. If, if it's anybody better, uh, I haven't seen them. Sean Tarver sticks a three for UCLA. Bruins back with an eight. That's a big three right there, Barry. They got to get an emotional lift somehow. Very difficult to play. Pressure defense on Jason Kidd. Notice how soft they play on him. Herbert, if there's any criticism of Jason Kidd, people say he doesn't shoot the ball very well. Seems to me I heard that criticism once before, too. <laughs> very right. This guy That's right here. <laughs> you know what? Uh, he probably can shoot, but just don't shoot. That's the problem. Or he looks the pass Three, first, like I used to do. Look the pass three. first, and then you decide to shoot, and it's not there. Can he step right in the lead match and be a star? Yes, he, 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 can, he can be a star, and, and especially on, in the right team, right situation, where they can run the uh, there's a running team and uh, let him just be the floor leader. Let me ask you this. You're a general manager. You got four guys that looks like three of them will come out. Glenn Robinson, Danielle Marshall, Jason Kidd, and Grant Hill. Which one do you take on this court? Because this year it's not clear cut like what a Maddox should feel or Neal. Teams are going to have to think about it with those four guys. Who does Magic, if you're starting a team, which one of the four you want? Well, if I'm starting a team, I'm going to take Robinson or Kia. No question about it. Because you need both on any team. Uh, you need a, a fabulous point guard. You would make no mistake taking Jason Kidd. Without doubt, but you won't make a mistake taking a look at that unbelievable pass, and the big man wasn't ready for exactly it. Exactly, wasn't ready. Did that frustrate you? You make a oh. pass like that, but your <laughs> big man was ready. Got to name a career, and he could dunk it too <laughs> once he got it. <laughs> but uh, Robinson can play too. I mean, he's he's a talent. So I don't think you go wrong. And, and then the other two guys can play too. Daniel Marshall's legitimate. Yes, yes. yes. Grant Hill. We know about Grant Hill. It's and gonna I, be really a, a, an interesting draft. No question about it. I think you can't go wrong taking either one of them. And then also Montrose, too. You, you won't go wrong with him down there, too. It'll reverse by O'Banna a little short, but he'll go to the line. Hey, changing the subject a little bit. You're a buddy now. Michael Jordan swinging the baseball bat. Can he make it? 
Well, I, like I told Michael, I'm behind him 100%. I don't know if he can make it because of the, the factor of the game, that baseball hunt. Here's somebody throwing 90 miles an hour at you, changing speeds on you. I'm hoping he can make it. I think if it's one guy that can do it, that, will, that loves the challenge, is Michael Jordan. You know what he said I thought was interesting? I talked to him. We happen to be living now in the same subdivision. I'm a groupie. I pass his house every day, too. <laughs> I chase him for autographs. But, I, I, you know, Michael said, I'm not afraid to fail. Fear of failure is not part of my life. I mean, here's a guy like yourself. I mean, he's in a position financially. He doesn't need all the scrutiny. But yet, he really wants that challenge. And that, to me, I really admire. What, 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 Dick, Michael Jordan is a guy that needs... You, you know why he retired? Because he didn't have any more challenge. It was nobody there. I mean, there wasn't a Magic and Lowry. Right. Nobody to just push his, that, that button, that competitive button that you need push sometimes. We see now Dan Duba offers him $15 million to fight Evander Holyfield. And my, my thinking about that, Irvin, is that he can hit Evander Holyfield easier than he hit a curveball. <laughs> what about Magic? <laughs> you got that right, but he, I don't think he want to be hit by Evander Holyfield. Uh, there is that. <laughs> what about yourself? You go for $20 million to fight for Holyfield? Oh. That's four fouls now on Buckley. That can be big also. This team not very deep. You've been following college basketball. Yeah, I watch it a lot. Who do you like out there right now for the future of the NCAA tournament? I, I like Arkansas. I think that with their pressure defense and uh, the way that they get after people, I like them. I like North Carolina later on because they always improve and get, be ready for the tournament. Uh, I like Michigan if, if they can just keep their heads together. And uh, Jalen looks like he's playing the best I've ever seen Jalen Rose play this, this season. I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to ask you specifically about Jalen. He's been so maligned, and I think so unfairly, when you look at the kind of career he's having. What kind of player do you think he can be at the next level? Oh, he can be a good player. You know why? Because now he's toned down his game. He's playing basketball now. Uh, you know what happens sometimes when the star leaves, and you, you, you've been a star, but you haven't shown your game yet. And the, the star leaves like Weber left, it was time for Jalen to show everybody that he could play basketball, and he's, he's doing that right now. We got an eight-point game right here. UCLA, if you're coaching them right now, what do you do to try and get your club back in the spot? Well, see that big three-pointer right there that just kills them right there. What I what I have to do, what I would do is just go out and pressure. Right now, they gotta go, even though Jason can Jason Key can handle basketball, you gotta pressure to bring this crowd back into the game, bring the players into the game. Because UCLA is used to running dunking on people, and they haven't been getting any of those easy dunks or easy layups because Cal is running their offense very well, slowing the game down. That's a great point. They've been very passive, and you need something to happen to to create some excitement. Exactly. Hey, you're going to be a coach. I think you're too smart to be a coach. He <laughs> wants to be an owner. He's not going to mess yeah. up being a coach. No, no. no, no he doesn't, you don't want to write $9 million checks to guys that really can't take you to the winner's circle. <laughs> well, no, I don't want to do that, and hopefully I won't do that. <laughs> hey, Magic, we want to really thank you for thank, joining us. Thanks for having me on, and Barry, oh, I can't good. wait to see you on boxing. Now, this is different from me hearing you here in terms of doing the basketball game, but I love you when you do boxing. Thank you, much. Yeah. I I'm going to see you see in the Magic's round ball game. I'll be down there. And thank you for joining us. We'll have a great time there, man. And we got some great kids. There you go. Oh, hello. Thank you. Thanks Jim again. Got the crowd back. Thanks a lot, Magic. We'll see if Ed O'Bannon can fire this crowd up. Bruins get it to nine again. Every time they've chipped away, though, Bears have come back. Only UCLA lead two to nothing. There's a look down low to McQueen, and he's going to draw the foul. The reason it's so difficult to run a spurt on California is because they got two outstanding shot makers who can break a spurt. Kidd and also Murray. Ty Sidney has picked up his third foul. Buckley on the bench with four. That could be big, that fourth foul, especially that bench so thin. That was a great look by Lamont Murray. Let's take another look at it. Well, there's a little dribble penetration. There's the dump down. Excellent wing pass to Jameson. Well, it's great having Magic here. I, tell you, I, just, I think so much of him. I watched him as a young guy growing up in Michigan. And the one thing, that smile has never, ever left his face. 
Well, the good guy. You know, there's just guys, you see guys, and you probably have seen even more than I, that can handle success, and other guys, very frankly, just can't handle it very well. And there's a guy who wrote the book, Dr. J, another guy. Lorenzo Romar sitting to the left. I think he's done a great job as an assistant coach here, former NBA player. People starting to talk about him as a potential head coach. Oh, he definitely can coach him there. California does a good job swinging the ball side to side, breaking defenses down. They did an excellent job there reversing the basketball. This is a nice play by Tyus Edmund. As an alternate position, I hate that rule. I just can't stand it. I'd rather see him throw the ball off. Human error, a part of the game. Kevin Dempsey has come into the ball game. He's a long-range shooter. He's got a little ulcer problem right now. I can sympathize with him. I had that same basic problem. He can shoot. He's a streaky shooter. Has not shot the ball as well this year as he did last year. Puts it on the floor, takes it to the baseline, hits the side of the backboard. Here come the Bears, four on one. Kid. Oh, so elementary and simple. And what a smile it brings to the magic man's face. I think he's got to be thinking a vision of himself watching that pass. In transition, there is no one in America that can make this play any better than Mr. Kid. Jason, I kid you not, kid, Captain Kid, All American, Rolls Royce, a superstar. And the fourth foul on it, and that may be even more significant. Edney with the penetration, penetration, I think they got Jones for the grab. And it's tough to think about taking him out the 9 20 in the lock, and you're down 13. You gotta let him play, trying to create some situations. You can't wait, there'll be no tomorrow. Oh, let me take that back. Edney with three fouls, and it was the fourth foul on Ed O'Bannon, not Edney. UCLA getting some really new blood next year. Tremendous recruits coming in over. Gibbons, a 6'10 shot blocker. J.R. Henderson, a big time rebounder. Toby Bailey, Chris Johnson, and are hoping to get either Jelani Gardner. When they're really excited about Gerard Ward from out of Mississippi coming to visit for their Louisville game about six times. Many people rate him as one of the top three players in America. And they have an outside shot. I don't think they have really a chance. I think they'll go to St. John's. Felipe Lopez had visited here from out of New York. Some boys now making that extra pass. I'm really impressed with the way they're making the extra pass. And that time Murray couldn't quite finish, and that's something he will rarely do. That was really surprising because it was a perfect pass. It was in great position, but a good shot. He seemed to be very tentative on that shot. And he's trying to dribble and penetrate. As soon as you spin, he's going to give it back. Oh, no. Well, sort of. I thought he should have given it back. See, that's the one. No, no. I'm going to write it down. Give him a little criticism right there. No, he should have made that pass. He's human. I didn't know he was human. I think I think Murray was shocked he didn't get that ball. So he got it in the long run anyway. He's got 29, and the Bears lead by 14. That's their biggest lead of the game. Here's the storyline in this game. Fast break points, a big edge to California. That's really been the difference. They've really dominated in the transition game. Ty said he's going to spin a little bit out of control as soon as he makes the spin. And here comes the Bears. This is the first bad decision. That's the only bad decision he made. He should have been giving it off. And we got to criticize him right there. He can't make those kind of decisions. That's only for guys that are mediocre. He's a superstar, PTP. -er. Well, the Bruins now looking up at the Bears from 14 down. Not only 14 down, but a struggling 14 down. Zia trying to post inside. He's going to wheel to the lane. Got to make that open shot when you go inside, outside. Charles for three. Charles Havana with 11 points. I agree with that. Even though there's the presence of Jason Kidd, you got to come after this club a little bit. You got to take a gamble. You got to come after him. Pressure. Achilles Jones squares up for three. He's been a solid role player. Combination guard. He's the only guy in the team married. He's had some injuries in the past. 
He actually started a couple of games for California early in this season. Todd Bozeman counted on getting quite a few minutes out of Achille Jones, but he just had kind of a slow start now. He's picking it up. He's getting really a pickup from a lot of guys right now. Buckley, Jameson. Oh, look at him hit the trailer. Had vision. Knew where he was. Oh, and finish. Gliding and sliding and slipping through the lane. LeBron Murray. 31 big ones. say no he's gonna to go to the free throw line Murray over 30 for the fourth time this year there's the dump inside I would count that basket you gotta count that goal definitely I definitely feel but oh, I gotta count it yeah they're gonna count it that was goaltending definitely the basket is good P.T. Pierce all over the place. In the stands with Magic, blowing a whistle. Garibaldi in the studio with John and Digger on the line. Mel Bannon. I mean, there's P.T. Pierce everywhere. Charles O'Bannon over the top for the rebound and a reach-in foul. Going to get Murray. Going to Southern Cal, playing for George Ravley. Everybody raves about him. He's the brother of Tracy Murray. Sure. Look at Bozeman. Look at the turtleneck. 27 and, and what a record. 29 and 7. Todd's a real student of the game, too. 17 and 4 in Pac 10 competition coming into this game. Worked under Perry Clark at Tulane, helped to build that program. Was there three years. fingertips of one of the Bears. I don't remember who it was. And it was a foul against the defensive team. And Jason was upset with himself because he felt had he had put it about three inches shorter, the basket would have been good and it would have been a foul. I was just thinking, can you imagine Nelly, who does a great job at Golden State, can you imagine if he were ever in a situation to get Jason Kidd to hook up with Chris Webber? You talk about an unbelievable future in Spreewell. Wow. And they're pals, too. Webber and Jason Kidd. That would be some dynamite combination. Jason almost went to Kansas. Personally, I think that really there was no way he was going to leave that area. I think he wanted to play in front of his family. But his dad's at every game. I'm sure he is somewhere here in Pauley Pavilion tonight. Well, if it's going to happen, UCLA's got to make something happen right now. they got to really start to do something defensively. Surprised Jason's not going to slide inside a little more and try to post. Wide open, they missed him. Oh, they had the big guy, Stewart, high low. Great execution. Bring the ball up to the foul line. Good post position inside by Stewart. I think they're well coached. <laughs> Stewart high for the rebound again. Stewart's starting to be an offensive presence, and that's given the Bears a whole new dimension. Jamison from Kidd. Travel. What a play right there. They take it away with travel. the travel. That's another assist taken out of the book. Right down the gut. I have never, I'm telling you right now, I have never, I don't know what you're thinking, John and Digger, but I have never seen a guy handle the ball in transition like this guy. That's pretty high praise. Oh, I I've been on TV now 15 years. I'm talking in the 15 years. I came in the post-Magic era. It's been a rough, incredible, down to 10. Tyus 
Sidney with the three-point shot. It is a ten-point lead. This change of direction is incredible. And he plays 40 minutes, basically. Came out for a minute or two earlier in this game. That's about it. Murray for three. And Zeta the rebound. They got to push it up the court. Oh, that's just going up. I mean, that is just poor basketball. You don't see that major college top 15 in the nation. Three guys standing around, throwing the ball out of bounds. Pretty tough to get a win. Pretty tough to get a win at home. Watch this right here. Here's Zedek. Now there's Ed O'Bannon. I don't know who's throwing it to. That's just not solid basketball. It's a communication problem. This place is a little bit antsy right now. The crowd here. Kid for three. And they say he can't shoot the rock like our guest Irvin Magic Johnson. Right. All they do is make the big play. There's a walk. Jimmy Herrick needs a timeout. Oh, Going from bad to timeout. worse. Last year they got humiliated here by Cal by 22. I can't believe this is the same team that I am seeing that we were here, you and I, when they beat that solid Arizona team. Played that game with much more emotion and feeling. Great it is kid. penetration. It's been the Jason Kidd show. He's done it all. Penetrate, shoot the three, make the pass. Play the defensive end. 17 points, 11 rebounds for Kidd. Tarver at the other end. How many assists? 11 assists. So he's got a triple double again. Well, still only has rebounds are lacking a bit. Same comments made about Robinson and about Jason Kidd on how hard they work in practice, too. Well, work ethic certainly a key. I know Jason Kidd absolutely loves to play the game. I was watching him today at the shoot around, and he was so involved in every situation. Yeah, in fact, he got in a little shooting contest with Todd Bozeman at the end of the shoot around today. Bozeman played at the University of Rhode Island. He's yep. a pretty good player. Yep. He could still stroke it pretty good. You know, he feels good. He said, Jason, come on, you're making me a star, Jason. I like it. Right here in Hollywood, Jason. Just keep it up. So please, Jason, don't think about the NBA. I mean, $70 million, what about your education? You know, Jason said, I could buy the school, coach. I could buy the school. I mean, really, I believe with every kid. I'd love to see them all come back because, you know, I love the college game. But the bottom line is, how could you possibly? That's what Todd told me today. He said, hey, if he's going to be top five, how could I possibly tell him to come back to school? He can always get his degree. It's just a fact of life. Sean Tarver sticks a three. And again, the Bruins picking away, but the Bears have always shut him off at the pass. Tarver's really picked up his game tonight. Their front court has not played well. UCLA's front court has been very, very soft. Yeah, Tarver's got 21. Yeah, Tarver and Edney have played a solid game. No goaltending call. Good block by O'Bannon, but Kidd stays with it and saves it. And they get a layup out of it. Oh, what a jam! What a hustle by Kidd on the sideline. I love him. I love Jason Kidd. Edney for three. And Murray gets the rebound. Just back it up. Back it up. Look how heady. Look how intelligent. He must hear what we're saying. Yeah, he's listening to it. He's so bright. What a great basketball intelligence. He has such a feel for the game. Take a look at that sequence the last time. You know what UCLA should do? They should go up in the stands, maybe, and make a call for Natalie Williams. I mean, she had 43 today, 15 rebounds, and a Pac-10 win over Stanford. What a player. Her dad was Nate Williams. She plays for UCLA. Spoke to her yesterday. She's probably as good as, and as, good as anyone in America. Yeah. And then not a bad volleyball player, either. I think that was a win against Cal. I think Stanford was playing USC tonight. Oh, was Cal. Stanford, pretty good basketball team. Somebody wrote me a note. I'm going to shoot him. I'm going to shoot him. They give me information. It's false information. <laughs> they can't do that to me. In fact, Stanford, the Stanford women and the USC women in a game tonight for first place amongst the women in the Pac-10 conference. Cheryl Miller's team. Yeah, great. running by a cohort. I worked with Cheryl. Followed out with 16 points. Ed O'Bannon. So Ed is gone with 16. Zedek is playing with four fouls. Not a strong 16. Not a strong 16 from Ed. Edney also on the floor with four fouls. 
Jimmy Harris is going to really have to get back to the drawing board and really regroup this team. You look at those Pac-10 standings now, all four with three losses. If this continues, Arizona's got three. Arizona would be in great shape if they didn't lose that game to Washington. Bobby Bender's going to yeah. But since that time, that almost kick-started him again. But an average night, a double-double. Doesn't have a triple-double tonight, a double-double. But his leadership has been just marvelous. Great run last year where they sent Duke out of the tournament in the second round, beat LSU first round before losing in a sweet 16 to Kansas. Well, the crowd thinks it's over. They're heading for the exits. Bears by 15. Well, should the Bears go on and win this ballgame, which it appears for all the world they will, we are looking at a virtual three-way tie in the Pac-10 Conference. California will still be a half game back. They played one less game. If they wind up, incidentally, in a three-way tie, the Bears would win the tiebreaker. I think it's big. You want to certainly win the Pac-10 title, have a chance if you're California or UCLA to stay right here on the West because one of the regionals are in Sacramento in terms of the early rounds, and the regional championship is in Los Angeles at the sports arena. So there's a chance you don't have to leave the state of California. What Todd Bozeman has done with this team, considering the injuries that he's had, seven scholarship players, and admittedly, he's got two great players, but. Amazing. He's done a great job of getting the maximum out of those two players, but he's also done a solid job of getting all the other players to understand their roles, Buckley and also Stewart. There's Todd Bozeman on that sideline. I just feel bad the way he got the job because I think it was very unfortunate the whole situation involving Luke Campanelli. Well, I completely agree with that. And Although he's starting to make believers out of folks, and that includes his peers. Better believe, look at those numbers. Look at the way they play. Nice rebound by Jamison. Stayed with it, fought him off, and drew the foul. They are literally kicking their... You know what? Yes. I mean, they are really out hustling, out scrapping them. It's a matter of hustle right now. UCLA has been totally out hustled. I mean, California is scrapping and fighting, and they're just absolutely out hustling right now, UCLA. Had a good win on the road up in Orlando, and a neutral court actually beating a, a good Cincinnati team, a scrappy Cincinnati young basketball team. And Jamison missed them both. Jameson had his season high, 18 points in that game. Yeah, really played well on the interior. He's the recipient of some great passes. Marquise Burns with a basket, and that is the first bench basket for UCLA in a ballgame. The whole trend of this game was established early by not getting back defensively, stopping the California transition. Literally, handles. I love the way he handles the basketball with either hand. And see, here's where he's a master with that new rule now where he can keep the ball as long as he wants in the shot. He can just play with it all day. That rule benefits a club that has a player like Jason. Tyus Edney picked Buckley's pocket, and Buckley comes back and hammers Edney. Got a lot of ball, but got him with the body. Yeah, definitely got him with the body. No doubt, little Tyus Edney is a ready performer. Here goes Ty setting up Buckley trying to come in to make the block. I mean, he's not trying to hurt him. He's not trying to come to deliberately hurt him. He's going after the basketball. There's the steal. He stripped him. He's a little bit embarrassed right now. Now he wants to catch up. So he compounds the problem. There's the contact. Boom, to the deck. Nice bounce switch right at him. So Buckley is out with his fifth foul. Contributed 10 points, but was a defensive factor. Not a good foul, though. You're up by the margin they are. You got four fouls. You probably would rather have you on the floor. Didn't the deuce. Well, the 
Bruins again peck away, but in this case, it may be a little late. Well, there's a turnover, and Dollar to the basket will go to the free throw line for two. Well, the good thing there is they get the foul quickly, stop the clock, and allow them to get into another yeah, trapping yeah, situation. Yeah, I'll tell you, they're hanging up here, though, only down nine. Well, you know, with the three-point shot, miracles can happen. Just remember Kentucky when they were down 31 on LSU. As the clock stops, got to convert these two. You get it to seven. Try to get it to within two possessions. California's got to be a little bit careful. They seem to be getting a little bit out of focus now. And this is What's where that? a guy like Jason Kidd go, now we'll take over. Dollar gets them both. Full court pressure. So I think they should have used this a little bit earlier in this game. There's Turnover. Tarver. You better get a T.O. You better get a T.O. Bozeman. You better get a T.O. Todd. And they have made a uh -oh. huge run. Tarver uh -oh. with 26. Four-point game. They're going to be turning around on the freeways and headed back here. They're going to change that statistic we showed with the Pac-10 standings. the reset. California does not have a time outlet. UCLA still has one. Team foul situation. Both teams in the bonus. Possession arrow to California. But UCLA on an 11 to nothing run and they've made six of them in a big hurry. Six points in the last 32 seconds making things happen with their defense. The pressure. We talked about it earlier. Why not the pressure a little bit earlier in this game to try and get a spark? They were so flat. You come out, trap, play full court. Maybe you put some spark in your club. Now for California, you've got to spread the court, get the ball in the hands. Oh, and a great lead pass. And a grab foul. Good job on the official to jump right in there. Both players tap each other on the back. Not a bad foul, though. It stops the clock quickly, and now it's got to make him convert these free throws. They sprint Murray out. There's the grab. Could be called intentional. Very close. Two shots in the ball. California. I'm a little bit upset with no ball in terms of the Murray, as you see, 6 of 11 tonight at the line, missed the first. This minute 37 is going to be an eternity for Todd Bozeman. Will look like a lot, like a sure win. Shows you again the wacky world of college basketball with a three point shot. The game is always in jeopardy. Five points, you have to think about three here. Just go to the basket. Well, had he had an easy basket and missed it. But I really hurt that score there. UCLA ball. Aaron pass from Jones to McQueen. We're looking at two possessions, Barry. So right now, they don't have to think about a three unless it comes within the realm of their offense. And they should penetrate. Right down the defense. Dribble penetration. There it is. All the way to the basket. Gave it up nicely to Tarver. Tarver with 28. Nice play. Now look at him getting into the press. Really hustling and scrapping. Now he's got to get the ball to Jason Kidd. They have it. Jason Kidd has not touched the ball in the last three possessions. Uh -oh. Tarver. Uh -oh. Yes. Uh -oh. Tie game. Unbelievable. Jones missed the shot. O'Bannon with a rebound. Somebody going to tell them they got Jason Kidd on their team. They forgot they got Jason Kidd. He has not been involved the last three trips. Unbelievable. It right. is a one-point lead. I said a tie game, one-point lead there. And now you got to play with poise. Spread the floor. Let Edney make something happen with dribble penetration. What a wild finish. What a nice pass in Temple. Spread the floor. Use the clock. Having a chance to win UCLA. Who would have ever thought of all those people that were leaving? And he gets it to O'Bannon. Violation. Clock Four ran out. Just a great job defensively by California and a very poor job in executing by UCLA. Should have had the timeout a little bit earlier to settle his club and to get them into a good offensive set. UCLA will use its last timeout. Well, obviously, they're going to play for the quick steal, and then they don't get it. They're going to foul and hope for the miss on a free throw line. And the Bears, on the other hand, got to get the oh, ball in the hands of Jason Kidd. Yeah, Jason Kidd has been nowhere to be found in terms of his teammates getting the basketball. They're dribbling into trap areas. 
What a finish, though. This is absolute mind-boggling. All those people that were leaving. See here, trying to dribble through a double team. And there they deflect the ball, kick it out of bounds, and then do an excellent job of taking the turnover and converting. Tarver's really played big. Yeah, was yeah, I two. thought it was a three-point shot, and I thought it was going to tie the game, but they said his foot was on the line. One official signal, three points. See, I think earlier they should have stepped it up with that trap defensively because for another reason, they were a very good basketball team in California, and maybe you wear them down. Physically, you wear them out. Let fatigue become a factor. I'll tell you, though, you have to salute UCLA, though, for some guts in coming back. You really do. Because everybody, I'm telling you, a lot of people have left this building. What an amazing run. They had a 15 and zip run in the last 348. So Jim Herrick will talk it over. Lute Olsen, I think, just jumped out of bed. He was watching the game win. He jumped out of bed. He thought it was going to be a three-way tie. And now he said, wow, what's going on? I don't know if he was like the better part of the crowd here at Pauley. He'd already turned the game off. <laughs> Jameson will inbound. It's been an adventure. There it is. Put it in his hands. He can dribble it out. And a quick foul. Now we check Mr. Kidd on a free throw line late in the game. We've talked about how he's like a 65% free throw shooter, except when the game is really crunch time. Five of seven tonight for Jason Kidd. Well, if you're UCLA, think of a following sequence. If he makes both, you're down three. Three-point shot, chance to tie the game. If he makes one out of two, you got a chance to win it with a three, or you can tie it in center overtime. Overtime, the favorite would be UCLA. And Kidd knocks it down. He stepped up there so confident. And here's a guy, the rock is not a great stroke. What do we talk about? Automatic at the end of the game. He's a shot maker with pressure on the line. Now you got to think about the three. Harvard's the guy that possibly. And he Edney missed, missed the three, front of the rim. Didn't need to shoot it quite that quickly, and Murray is fouled. Nine seconds left. He makes one free throw here, it's over. He makes one free throw here, you make your flight. Yeah, that's a bit like the red eye tonight <laughs> at 12 midnight. I'm a nervous wreck. My wife's got the bag, we're going to sprint out, but this is priorities right here in the game. As Murray, if he makes this free throw, look at Cal, look at Jason, his eyes, he's winking his eyes out, it's like, what happened? Good footy at 15, weren't they? Yeah, 15 late in the game. Incredible. And Murray bangs it off the back. Gets two attempts because they're in the bonus, 10. 7 of 14 for Murray. This is the one he needs. Hodge going to age quickly. 35 because 36. It's over. They just got to play good token defense. Let him go. They can't lose the game. Let him score. Cameron Dollar does score with four Hodge seconds stops, left. Though. They don't have a timeout. Somebody signal for a timeout. And Dollar makes the foul on Kidd. Intentional. Called intentional, I believe. I thought he signaled intentional, Bob Garibaldi. Did he not? I didn't. I don't we know. We couldn't see from that. He was being blocked by the cameraman. Clock stops in the last one minute after the score. Get in there, Cal. I like get in there. Well, it's obviously not intentional because there'll be two shots in the ball. It's just two shots. So, kids, seven to nine at the line. Jason with 21 points. Just so automatic late in the game. Forget that 65% stat. It's meaningless because this guy is a shot maker and a crunch maker late in the game. There you are. Four Makes in a row. When he really needs it. Made four in a row. Tarver, a long three. It won't matter. The ball game is over. The Cal Bears have come down here and beaten UCLA for only the third time in 34 years, but for the second time in two years.
California wins it 92 to 88 to force a virtual three-way tie in the Pac-10 Conference. For Dick Vitale, I'm Barry Tompkins. See you down the road.